We take you live to Halton Police Headquarters where police are releasing the results of a major auto theft investigation dubbed Project Ninja. Let's listen in. At the conclusion of today's event. I would now like to introduce Deputy Chief Hill to the podium. Thank you, Jeff. Welcome, thank you for joining us this morning. First, I'd like to acknowledge Councilor Jeff Noel standing behind me, Chair of the Police Services Board for his attendance and support and the support of the board to make these investigations possible, so thank you. I'd also like to thank De Detective Phil Vandenbuchel and Detective Autumn Mills, members of our organized crime unit, who will be providing you with the details of this unique project, Project Ninja. It is also important to acknowledge our partners in this investigation, the CBSA and the Ontario Provincial Police. This is a successful investigation is a result of their hard work and relentless commitment to identifying the members of this auto theft group and putting a stop to their crimes. As you are about to hear, this group is believed to be responsible for losses of at least 40 vehicles valued in excess of $3 million. Unfortunately, while the method is unique, the crime is not, and the statistics don't lie. To date this year, in the Halton region alone, 869 cars have been stolen. While this represents a 7% decrease from this time last year, this is no cause to celebrate. Clearly, this is not unique to the Halton region, and these thefts remain a priority provincially. In fact, nationally, auto theft is estimated to be a, a billion and a half dollar economic loss. This case clearly demonstrates that when it comes to organized crime and making money, these offenders know no boundaries and will evolve their techniques to avoid detection. There needs to be, continue to be a collective recognition that this is not just property crime. This is organized crime that is traumatizing and hurting people. It shakes our community's sense of safety, even more so as the sanctity of their homes is breached with criminals increasingly willing to enter homes in pursuit of cars. As a police service, we recognize and understand that these thefts cause fear and frustration. I want to reaffirm today that our number one priority remains the safety and well-being of our community, and that our service is firmly and deeply committed to combating all forms of crime at all levels, including auto theft. The work completed as part of Project Ninda is a testament to our mission to di disrupt organized crime, a mission shared throughout the organization. To this end, we are devoting even more extensive resources to achieving this priority goal and we will not stop until the criminals do. We are and will continue to respond to incidents using every tool and technique available to us. This includes the creation of our de dedicated organized crime unit, training frontline officers in vehicle theft detection, and ongoing participation in joint investigations of which our service is represented provincially in large scale projects. We are working every day to mitigate risk and prevent auto theft from occurring in the first place by taking additional steps to educate the public and equip them with the resources they need to help them stay safe. We're also partnering with the private sector, insurance companies, government and other key stakeholders to introduce measures that reflect the severity of the crime and desensitize individuals and groups from committing these in the first place. We call upon these groups to do more as needs, more needs to be done. Make no mistake, as long as the financial rewards outweigh the risk of getting caught, these crimes will continue. An informed public is a safer public, and we are safer when we work together. We ask everyone to continue to report suspicious activities to us. You know your neighborhoods better than we do. Project Ninja and so many others like it are often solved, at least in part, from information received from members of our very own community. Finally, today's announcement is not the first, nor will be the last and we will continue to do all we can, can to bring offenders to justice. Halton is not the place to come to commit crimes, and we will unreservedly place those who choose to do so at the epicenter of our next project. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. And I'd like to introduce Detective Phil Vandebugel. Good morning. My name is Phil Vandenbuchel, and I'm a detective with the Halton Regional Police Service overseeing the Organized Crime Unit. In May 2024, 
the organized crime unit commenced Project Ninja after a stolen Toyota Tundra from Hamilton was recovered in the residential area in Burlington. Project Ninja focused on individuals suspected of being involved in an organized group responsible for stealing vehicles in Halton and the greater Toronto area. Through an extensive canvas following the recovery of this Tundra, a suspect vehicle was subsequently identified. A short time later, this vehicle was located in what was believed to be a rental residence in the greater Toronto area. Over the next several months, through surveillance and various investigative avenues, individuals were identified along with additional suspect vehicles. These individuals would frequently travel back and forth from Quebec to the GTA and often change locations of their short-term rentals. While in Ontario, this group targeted newer model high-end vehicles, primarily Toyota, Tundras, and Lexus RX 350 SUVs that were parked overnight in private driveways. To gain access to the vehicles, the group would damage the rear passenger windows and then reprogram blank key fobs to steal, to steal them. Through surveillance, the group was observed transporting the stolen vehicles to the Port of Montreal a number of different ways. These methods included loading them onto sea containers and on several occasions, loading them into the toy hauler RV, which is on display outside. All of these stolen vehicles were destined to be shipped overseas. On the evening of July 24th, 2024, members of the organized crime unit observed the stolen vehicle being loaded in the back of the toy hauler RV outside an industrial complex in Scarborough. With assistance from the OPP, a traffic stop was initiated and the driver was arrested for trafficking stolen property over 5,000 and other auto-related offenses. Over the next month, investigators continued to identify individuals involved in this auto theft group. In the early morning hours of August 24th, 2024, members of the Organized Crime Unit, with the support of additional Halton investigators, observed individuals connected to this group steal a Toyota Tundra in the residential area of Finch Avenue and Brimley Road in the city of Toronto. A short time later, three additional suspects were arrested by members of the Organized Crime Unit. Following these arrests, a search warrant was executed at a residence in Oshawa, where several individuals of this group were temporarily staying. This resulted in additional evidence being seized. Currently, four individuals have been charged for their alleged involvement in these thefts. Four others are wanted on Canada-wide warrants for their involvement in this group. To date, a total of 55 criminal charges have been laid against these eight individuals. The names, ages, and nationalities of those charged are provided in the media release you've received at the start of today's event. So far, over 40 vehicles have been confirmed to have been stolen by these individuals, 12 of which have been recovered. We anticipate the number will rise as additional vehicles are identified. We believe this group is responsible for additional vehicles Vehicle thefts not yet linked to them, and as such, our investigation is ongoing. We encourage anyone with information that may assist in the location and arrest of these wanted individuals to contact investigators at 905-825-4747, extension 7006. Tips can also be submitted anonymously through Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477 or through the web at www.haltoncrimestoppers.ca. The Halton Regional Police Service thanks the Ontario Provincial Police and the Canada Border Service Agency for their assistance in this investigation. I would also like to express my appreciation to the public for supporting our ongoing efforts to combat auto thefts in Halton and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. Lead investigator, Detective Constable Mills, along with Deputy Chief Hill and Board Chair Jeff Newell, will now be available to answer any questions you may have. So, what needs to happen next to better, um, to better prevent these types of crimes from happening in the first place? There, there's quite a few things that we could do, and, and sure. Through the, uh, you'll see the, through the entire Association of Chiefs of Police, there's quite a few resolutions that we've actually brought forward for, uh, and advocated for. Uh, some of them are, we still have to strengthen the border. Um, we, the, the CBSA is, a, is an incredible partner with us. We work incredibly with, uh, with them. 
but they need more resources. Uh, as you heard, these vehicles are still going through the border, and while they continue to leave the country in that manner, that means there's still money. And until we shut down the fact that there is the money is worth more to the people that are doing this than the risk of getting caught, this will continue. It's big money. Uh, when you talk about when I said that it's a, a billion and a half dollar uh, economic loss, if you can go out and as a spotter make several hundred dollars just for pointing out a vehicle, someone else can make a couple thousand dollars just for stealing a car and you can pull off three in a night and then someone on the other end is making up towards you know, $50,000 and the risk is minimal, it's going to keep going and we need to make some of those changes. There's technological changes that need to occur. Uh, there needs to be increased security. Uh, we've asked manufacturers to look at that as part of the advocacy of uh, creating the cars uh, to make them harder to steal in the first place. Uh, and that also includes immobilizers, um, tra better tracking devices. There's private companies, when we speak about partnering, uh, there's private companies out there that have excellent GPS tracking devices that are being used successfully in other provinces other than ours. Um, so there is quite a, quite a bit of stuff that's going to be doing there. When it comes to key fobbing or reprogramming, you can effectively buy some of, these, uh, some of this equipment on Amazon. There has to be some sort of regulation or restriction uh, brought forward that uh, you know, restricts that to, to people that are involved in the trade only, not just anybody. And the other part when we talk about risk and reward is the application of stronger penalties. There is laws that already exist that speak to this, but we need the application of stricter penalties so that people realize that there is uh, a downside to this, uh, that when they are caught, because we will catch you, uh, but there has to be an outcome to that. And those are some of the things that we are advocating for that, and they're gonna have to happen. Chair, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, um, the Halton Police Board and through my involvement with the Canadian Association of Police Governance, we're advocating to the federal government for significant changes to uh, reduce effectively the uh, pipeline um, for these stolen vehicles. Right now, we have a situation where uh, the Port of Montreal is effectively uh, open gates. Um, these cars can literally be driven uh, in their in their various uh, sea containers onto the port and onto a ship and into other countries and being sold within a few days. That has to stop. There needs to be more technology applied uh, at the Port of Montreal to ex examine the contents of sea containers that are arriving at the port uh, and effectively arresting uh, the individuals that are transporting them. We it's disheartening. Uh, as a police service board, as a police board, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, employ our, the finest in policing um, uh, in terms of technology and the people uh, and the resources that are necessary to, to find the bad guys. And we're finding the bad guys and we're recovering the vehicles. And I want to congratulate the team on this successful project. But um, the other piece that uh, Deputy Hill mentioned was there has the penalties have to be in, enhanced. Right now we're seeing a situation where uh, on average 3% of cases across the province are actually going to trial. Um, you know, they're either being dealt away or they're being thrown out. And so when there's no penalty, uh, when, when the risk is so minimal, um, there's an opportunity created for organized crime. And even for that matter, uh, I, I guess, you know, basically just opportunistic individuals that uh, are looking to make a few bucks with a fairly low risk of, uh, of, um, of downside. Uh, if the fine's, you know, if the fine's a couple grand, uh, and it's a night in jail, then you know, maybe it's worth making the risk or taking the risk because uh, it's going to pay off at the end of the day. We have to really encourage uh, the province through the, the ministry and the crowns and the judges to really take this more seriously. I know my residents do in this community and this board and I as a councillor, we hear about this every single day. It is simply... Um, it is simply just so in the face of everybody in this community. Everybody here in Halton Region knows somebody who has had a car stolen. And sadly, we're seeing more and more people who, who know uh, individuals that have had cars stolen from the street through carjackings or home invasions. It's becoming a significant issue. So uh, the, the demand has to be cut off. The pipeline has to be cut off and we need to talk, the manufacturers need to come to the table as well. And if they can, if they can actually have technology in the cars that can do everything from streaming Netflix movies to, uh, you know, auto summoning and uh, auto driving, then they can certainly put technology in the vehicles to, to disable the ability to be able to steal them. I, I, I dare any of you to try to open my phone right now. 
The reality is you can't because the technology is baked into this phone that you can't just pick up my phone and steal it and walk away with it and be able to use it. It's going to require significant uh, cracking. You're never going to get my data. You know, we can do this or the manufacturers can do this uh, on the cars, on the vehicles. The technology exists today. Two-factor authentication, other technology can be deployed rapidly. I've met with uh, the Global Auto Manufacturers Association and they, they basically are just full of excuses at this point. They're, they're not willing to take that, that extra step or they claim it's going to take years to, to, uh, um, uh, to put in place. And, and these are just hollow excuses at this point. There needs to be action taken now. The public are they're, they're fed up with it. Police boards are fed up with having to spend money hand over fist just to see cases thrown out. And uh, uh, it, it is inherently impacting the quality of life when people do not feel safe uh, in their homes, when the ultimate violation of somebody stealing uh, a car from your driveway or from under your, your seat, um, you know, that, that's, that's the last straw for the public. And I think we need, to, uh, we need to make sure that all politicians at all levels, and, uh, you know, us at the municipal level, we'll, we're taking responsibility. We need the provincial government and the federal government to also become significant partners in this to, to again, cut the flow cut the pipeline and uh, resource uh, the, the border security effectively and make sure that, uh, you know, the, the old Beretta adage, <laughs> dating myself a little bit, if you can't do the uh, time, don't do the crime. If we don't have that in place, if people just actually feel that they can get away with this, um, you know, with a slap on the wrist, it's not going to stop. I have a question for either one of the detectives on the case. Uh, it, it just says here that uh, Algerian nationals traveled to Canada. They set, up, they set up shop in Quebec and then they sort of made their way to the GTA doing short-term rentals. Is it common for countries, other countries, to send groups of criminals to Canada to, to get these cars shipped back? So I can't I can't speak specifically to that, but in in this case, um, we we don't believe these people to be employed in Ontario or Quebec. Um, we do believe them to be residents of Quebec. They they are here from Algeria. We're currently working with CBSA to determine more about their status. Um, they are lawfully in Canada, residing in Quebec, and, and we do believe that they come to Ontario for the sole purpose of committing. Okay, just a quick follow up. Can you talk about discovering this RV? I mean. It looks normal, it looks like a typical RV, and then it, it's hollowed out. Just talk about you know, the, the tricks and the, the criminals are using to get these cars to, to the port. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we see on a daily basis criminals in all crimes becoming creative to, to avoid police detection, and, and this is another example of that. Um, we've never seen it before. Uh, our... our Partners have never seen it before, and, and we were certainly shocked um, when we realized that the vehicles were actually being driven into the RV. Um, so again, another, another creative example of to get traffic these vehicles to the Port of Montreal and then ultimately make money off them overseas. Uh, in terms of the types of vehicles, there seems to be a common theme here in terms of trucks and Lexus SCU. Why these specific types of vehicles? Uh, two, two parts, I think, the value of a, of a Toyota Tundra. They, they were 2023-2024 Toyota Tundras, um, and newer model Lexus SUVs, they're, they're valued at at least $80,000. Um, and then these are also Toyota brand, and they seem to be easier to reprogram with blank key fobs. And a follow-up, I, mean, I don't know if it's for the investigator or it's for a broader scale, but when you guys said that they're Algerian nationals who they're lawfully in Canada, but you believe that they came for the purpose to commit these crimes. Where do we go from here for the federal government, for CBSA officers? Are conversations happening to say, okay, how do we actually detect this before it happens, whether it's from Algeria or other countries where you believe where this is the often occurred? Yeah, it's can't get too much specific into that and in that in like that's uh, you know obviously a larger issue than what what uh, is at play here today it is one of the things though that you know we often will and it, when we do these projects we will often partner with groups like CBSA and, and the CRA for example right at the beginning of the project so that when we identify uh, people like this that we can start working those angles uh, right off the bat um, so every time we see something like this, we will be involving the CBSA, and they have a, a specific role to play. Uh, we were, you know, even as late as yesterday, speaking to them specific about this case. Uh, so there's a role to play uh, for them there, and we'll continue going down that road. So.
on a ship and get overseas? I'll actually turn to Autumn because they actually watched it happen. So. Yeah, so we, we saw various uh, measures being taken here. We saw them drive, um, it, it's called hot loading, drive these vehicles onto shipping containers right after they're being stolen. And then those shipping containers make their way on the 401 to the Port of Montreal within a span of, you know, six hours. Um, and, then, and then same thing here, you know, a vehicle can be stolen in the morning and uh, be on a shipping container at the port later that evening. Um, so unless something, there's a reason for CBSA to search that, that shipping container, it often makes its way uh, overseas and, and that can be in within a day. How long do you think this, this, uh, this crime ring has been operating? Um, so our information suggests that they've been active since at least January of, of 2024. So how many more cars, so at least 28 cars made it across overseas, how many more do you think? Well, the, as mentioned, the investigation is still on. There's information and intelligence coming in daily, um, and we're doing everything we can to, to draw connections to other thefts, but at least 40, um, and we, we have recovered 12. In those countries, the vehicles were sent? Uh, yeah. In, in this investigation, Dubai and Morocco is where these have ended up. The suspects stole the cars here, and then they made their way over to the RV that was being held in, in Scarborough, right? Yes. Um, so the uh, Olivier Paquette is the um, owner of the truck and the RV that you see out there. Um, and he would come to Scarborough and they would load, the suspects would meet him and they would load uh, the vehicles onto the RV. Um, so he, the RV was primarily in Montreal and would come to Toronto for the purpose of trafficking that, that vehicle back to Montreal. Okay. So we have a question. Where were these short-term rentals happening? Like they were all, all over the GTA from where Niagara to Durham region um, and everywhere in between. So you mentioned before that they're here illegally. Um, do we have any idea about, uh, you know, are on board visas, tourist visas? We're, we're still working with CBSA to determine that information at this point. What's the belief in terms of, are these eight individuals, the masterminds of this? Or is this starting from Algeria and there's a greater plan? Yeah, so um, as mentioned, the investigation is still active and ongoing. So in an effort not to compromise that component of the investigation, we're not going to comment on that right now. It says most of the suspects are... Um, when is that bail hearing happening? Bail hearing scheduled for today, I believe, actually. Uh, three are in custody at this time, yes. Uh, released, yes. Was that disappointing to you guys? I mean, we about that a lot, too. Mm -hmm. There's so much work going on behind the scenes to bring these people to justice, and then they're released on bail like a day later. I'm wondering, from the perspective of the police, what do you think of that? Yeah, of course, it's frustrating and disappointing, which is why, hopefully, um, the measures being taken are to try and change that. Um, but all we can do is, is our job and go from there. We've been getting an update from Halton Police Headquarters regarding the results of Project Ninja. This was an investigation into auto thefts. 40 vehicles valued at $3 million have been recovered in total this year. In Halton, there have been 869 vehicles that have been stolen. A very large number. However, it's 7% decrease from last year but still lots of work to be done. We'll have a lot more on that announcement throughout the morning.